I'm Scott Al Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. But right now, I'm not in Nicaragua. I'm actually recording this in Central Florida. I'm here in Orlando, and I am up here for several days with my family. My uh, youngest daughter is now 12, and we wanted to take her to Disney World when she was old enough to remember it, but still young enough to really enjoy it. And so this kind of was our one opportunity. We're on our way to see my dad, uh, and and we have a bunch of stuff going on uh, in North America, so we needed to to come through Florida anyway. So we were coming to Orlando and putting in a little bit of time at Disney World as we transit through and it's been really great. So I'm, I'm not gonna be filming an entire like we're not going to Disney World with the cameras. My family doesn't want to be on camera, so I don't want people to think we're going to do a bunch of Disney episodes and show all the things and make like, like I would love to do that, but that is a different bit of content. So I just want to put that right at the beginning so people aren't watching this thinking that's what they're going to get. But I do want to give you guys some recaps on our time here, what our travel's been like, our adventures, but we're going to condense it quite a bit because we're going to be doing more of a normal episode. So we're going to get to that right after the bump. Before I get in too deep to what we've been doing here in Florida, I just wanna point out a couple of the places that we've been staying, just in case anybody wants information on those. So we're staying here in the Disney Springs area. This is what used to be downtown Disney and the Disney off-site hotels. These are on property at Disney. I'm actually inside Disney World, but these are the private hotels that operate on Disney property. So it's kind of a halfway between the full Disney properties like the Contemporary or the Grand Floridian or the uh, Riviera, stuff like that, and hotels that are just somewhere out in Orlando. These are on property, but uh, they're only they're only kind of on property, right? So it's kind of neat. So behind me is the Double Tree, and this is where we spent most of our time while we were here. That's operated by Hilton, and as many of you know, I'm a big fan of Hilton Hotels. They've been really good for us. Uh, and I'm going to only show them for a minute because there's a bit of traffic and I want to turn the camera around and get it away from the traffic. But that is where we stayed the majority of our time. They were absolutely fantastic. We love it there. Our room was enormous. And as you guys know, I did a video about we got some uh, credit cards. I was managing points and stuff and doing a bunch of work with that. Our time at the Doubletree for our entire trip to Disney. Basically a week at the Doubletree was 100% paid for in Hilton Honors points, almost all of which came because of our Hilton Honors Amex card and the way that we managed it. We did everything we could to manage how we got points, how we collected them, save them up, and then use them as auspiciously as possible. Uh, because if you do the right thing with the right type of points at the right hotels, you do four days on points and get a fifth day completely free. So we were able to get so much time at the Doubletree and not have to pay anything for it you kind of pay, right? I don't want to say it's free. It's not exactly true, but it's totally off of credit card and Hilton Honors points. Uh, so that was, you know, good points usage made this trip so much more affordable than it would have been otherwise. So it's something I recommend a lot, but the Doubletree was fantastic for our entire trip. The room was so comfortable. Uh, it's just a great location and so easy to get in and out of, uh, of Disney World. After being at the Doubletree, we then, because we used up all of our points, and we had points from, and I mentioned this card as well, a Chase Sapphire card. Now this one we didn't get recently. We've had this one for a really long time. So we saved up points over a really long period of time, and we used them to get the rest of our hotel stays while we were here, and we stayed at the Drury. Now you may notice that I, don't seem to have moved very much. And that's because the double tree, I'm actually now looking at the double tree and that's a jury behind me. All I did was turn the camera around. I didn't even move off the sidewalk spot that I was on in order to get both of these hotels in this shot. So it was that easy. We just picked up our luggage and walked across the street here. And this is the main hotel boulevard as it's called coming through Disney Springs. And just to my right is actually Disney Springs, the area with all the restaurants and uh, shopping and all that. And you can walk the sidewalk I'm on goes right there. So it's very easy to get there from here. We're super Super happy with the Disney Springs hotel area. It is absolutely like a quarter to half the price of the Disney hotels on property. You are farther away, but there are free shuttles taking you in. You still get some special early admission benefits. You still are able to use a bunch of Disney points between things. Like it's really, really nice. And being able to walk to Disney Springs and be part of that. So if you take Disney transportation to Disney Springs, you can just walk down the sidewalk to here. Like this really is nice. I'm very happy with this. And we get to use whatever hotels we would use on the outside. We don't stay at Disney hotels that often. We can go decades between staying at them. So you don't like gain points by staying there in a, in a really useful way, 
but by uh, using the hotels that we use in normal life all the time, we're able to leverage points much better. So for a lot of people, these are actually much better. Plus, we spent some of our time going to Universal as well, just for a few days. We put in three days over there, and staying at these hotels made that a little bit easier as well. We didn't have to take a bus out of Disney off to Universal. We're already kind of on the outside. So overall, this has been a great hotel experience, and we paid nothing for our entire time here. All points completely. That was that was really amazing. While we were here, we did five days in Walt Disney World with uh, two days at Magic Kingdom, one day at Animal Kingdom, Epcot, and uh, Disney Hollywood Studios. And we did three days at Universal. We had the park hopper over there. So each day we kind of moved between Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure. Uh, so eight total days in the parks and we are absolutely exhausted. That is too much, especially with a 15-year-old and a 12-year-old who don't really go out and walk. They're not athletic. They're not into outdoor sports or anything. So the amount of walking here in Disney World and, and in Universal is, is really extreme. That took a toll on them a lot. Uh, but our biggest thing, which I'll do a separate video about or talk about some other time, uh, my 15-year-old got a toe infection while we were on the way here. So she had it about 48 hours ahead of arriving and that made for some really severe problems. But it also gave us some solutions. So I'm gonna talk about that uh, as well. But, uh, but our stays, like our whole hotel thing has been fantastic. I'm right here at the end, we're about to check out. I'm actually heading at this time uh, to the airport to take my kids to New York. They're gonna be getting dropped off uh, with my father. So I'm gonna get to see him for just a minute. I'm gonna be staying in New York uh, for one night and I'll be returning to Florida just in time to turn around and head to Mexico. So we just have tons going on at the time that I'm recording this, it's all so busy. I'm trying to get what little bit of recording done I can here. Again, I, I don't wanna record my family's time. My kids don't like being on camera. My wife doesn't really like being on camera. They certainly don't like recording our family time for things. So that's something I really try hard not to do. And that's when I first started doing our travel channel in 2015, um, I did a little bit of recording actually in 2012. And at that time, my kids were so young, like having them on camera didn't mean anything. Like they would be there, but whatever. Um, but by 2015, they could be on camera. And uh, back then they had a little bit of interest and now and then they'd pop on camera and, and give their own input. And it was really cool, but it was, it was very hard to do. I wasn't editing at the time. I was still learning how to make the show. And maybe if I had been doing the show like I am now back then, then it would have been different. But they grew up with the show being something that I've, I've done for years. They understand that I do it and, and they're fine with that, but they don't really want to be a part of it. And they certainly don't want it intruding into our family time. And so when we're doing something like a, a family trip like this, absolutely, I don't want to be recording them. They don't like that. We take a few pictures. And even on this trip, we actually, I didn't bring a camera. I just kept my phone on me and, and did just just a dozen pictures or so like it didn't even want it to be a, a trip where we're photographing everything because is that really a thing you go back and look at that much a little bit yes i do appreciate some of the photos from when i was a kid and went to disney world but it's it's few and far between we get lots of time in normal life to take pictures and make videos we don't need to do it when we're on vacation and especially in a place like disney world there is so much media out there that you can go get to see what every ride looks like what every restaurant looks like what everything like i would love to do Disney video uh, vlogging experiences and really talk about ways to approach it. And actually my very first travel show back in 2005 was my wife and I doing a podcast together about traveling to Disney World because we used to come all the time. We've, we've come so many times uh, and, and come from very far afield and we've done everything from staying at the, the the most expensive resorts to doing you know just weekend trips to doing long 10 day trips to uh staying off property semi property on but like we've done it all over a very long period of time i've been coming here since 1987 regularly um we've come as children as uh teenagers as single adults as married but without children married with tiny children married with old children We've really done, with extended family, we've done the the range of ways to come to Disney over the years, and we've watched Disney World change. And so even in 2005, I think we had a really valuable and one of the earliest podcasts about Disney travel. Back then, like podcast was podcasting was a very new thing. It was only in the first couple of years, and uh, I think it was really cool, and we really enjoyed doing it. And then we went on to do, um, a number of years later, we were doing a travel show as well, but eventually that kind of fell by the wayside. Uh, but we did enjoy podcasting together and about travel and this kind of stuff. So we have that kind of history about this. But now, with the kids and all, uh, it's it's really nice to be able to come 
um, and just do it ourselves. But I would, I would if there was if there was some way to finance it because it's so expensive. Um, and I only get limited time in the states. But doing a show where we came up for I don't know a week or two every year and did a whole bunch of content um, about you know restaurants and rides and changes and theming and ways to approach things and places to stay and resorts and hotel like there's a ton of potential content in a very small area. That would be lots of fun to do, but I don't think it fits very well with my normal audience. And I don't know that it's something that needs to be covered. There's so much coverage of that out there that I don't know if I could really meaningfully add to it. So all that to say, not doing any recording on this particular portion of the trip. I am planning on recording starting today now that we have done our time and my kids are going with my father. I'm going to be uh, much more able to do uh, my normal recording schedule and, and so forth. Uh, so that is that is the plan. But we had a really good time. Um, our trip up, I just want to talk about a little bit. So we uh, left from Managua Airport. And this is our first time flying out. of. We've been in the airport picking people up and stuff quite a bit. But this is our first time flying out of Managua in a year and a half or possibly longer. We've actually not flown out of Managua in quite some time. Uh, and, and it's noticeable how much work has been done at Managua Airport. So first of all, we drove out from Leon late at night. So uh, the flights are at about uh, 1.30 in the morning. So you don't have to leave Leon until like 10 o'clock at night. Like, oh, it's so it's probably it's probably early. It's probably nine o'clock. But able to get in in Leon and just drive out to the airport. We had to take a taxi because our car had some radiator problems. So we just had Leo drive us out. Leo, who's been on the show a few times, uh, drove us out to the airport. No problems at all. Get dropped off. It's such a small airport and going in the middle of the night makes it even more casual. But a significant portion of the traffic coming into Managua actually comes in in the middle of the night. So it's not as slow in the night as you might expect. And it's not as busy in the day as you might expect. So arriving at midnight ish, it was actually a fair number of people and huge lines that they had to control because so many people were checking into the overnight Spirit flight. Spirit is the main carrier in the middle of the night and all of their flights are late at night. So if you're flying Spirit, you're gonna be part of this super late night crew, um, which is, it, it's actually kind of a fun experience. Arthur, who uh, moved down partially based on material found from the channel here, uh, he said, you know, one of his favorite things is flying Spirit out of Managua late at night or into Managua because it's so late. So first of all, it's Spirit. It's a low cost airlines. They're very casual in ger general, right? They're not like a really stuffy, traditional, high cost, you know, American United Airlines. Nothing wrong with those airlines. Just they have a very for a, a high formality rate, right? Spirit is much more casual in general. And then flying the last flight at night out of Managua is so incredibly casual. He said it's like everyone's given up and we're just all in this together. We can get through the night, people. We can do this. And you feel much more like you're part of a team rather than rather than being, you know, uh, in this like, you know, customer service and people over here, you don't have that them and us kind of feeling. It's like, we all want to go to bed. We all want to get to where we're going. Let's just get through this. Now, the airport has been, I wanted to break in. This is future Scott hopping in. I've had a number of people, both before this video and after, try to tell me that they had heard from someone that there's no air conditioning at the Managua airport, which is absurd because that would be so warm. People would be like really upset about it. Everybody would be talking about it. We'd hear all the time because everyone we know flies through there on a regular basis. So I didn't think this could be true. Of course, on any given day, it could break down and then people would be unhappy about it. So that's plausible for sure, but that they don't have air conditioning there anymore doesn't make any sense at all, especially as they've done so many projects to upgrade the airport. So just to let you know, I flew through at the time that this video is about, which is back in March, they definitely had air conditioning. I went to Belize in between, they definitely had air conditioning. I know other people who've flown in and out through Managua during that time, they definitely had air conditioning. And I was just there a few days ago, they definitely have air conditioning. So yes, it may have broken down at some point, but there is this and this is drives me crazy, right? This is one of those things. Somebody somewhere is creating this rumor that there's no air conditioning at Managua Airport. And who is going to run out to Managua Airport to disprove it? It sounds like one of those, ah, oh, the third world, everything's falling apart stories and everyone just believes it because why wouldn't you? But it's completely made up. It's not true. There's absolutely air conditioning at the airport. We even talked about it while we were there specifically. We we're like, oh yeah, there's, there's definitely air conditioning. There's never once been a time that I was at Managua Airport and they did 
didn't have air conditioning. So again, it could break down. Any given person may have a story if you truly trust that person that maybe it didn't have air conditioning, but also they may not know what air conditioning feels like in Nicaragua because they don't air condition it to 70. They air condition it to like 79, right? It's, it's pretty warm, but it's definitely cooler than the outside. But if they're not paying attention, they'll just go, oh, I feel warm. Therefore, there's no air conditioning. And then it'll repeat that story. Watch out for that happening. People seriously do that stuff a lot. We get this constantly, but there's absolutely air conditioning at Managua Airport. Okay, back to the original timeline. Updated significantly. There's like new lounges and stuff. Like it looks so different than when we were there uh, just a couple years ago. It used to be one very Nicaraguan restaurant, super overpriced, off in a corner. That wasn't there now, but we have brand new Pacifica Lounge or something like that. Beautiful. Um, the new uh, Florida Kanye experience that's like a small version of the one at the Galerias is in there. Uh, a lot of nice stuff. It was, it was very cool. We hung out, obviously waiting for our flight. I mean, there's not much to do. It's still a tiny airport, so casual to fly through. Uh, there was a lot of, I noticed, even though it was it was midnight, a lot of like souvenir places were open as you waited to check in as well. Now we had checked in online. We All we had to do was a baggage drop. My camera died while we were in Florida, and now I am here many months later, finally catching up on everything that I was recording. And my dog is running around like crazy. So we had a good flight up to, my, up to Miami. And when we got to Miami, we ran into a little bit of a problem. We want to rent a car because we're heading to Walt Disney World and uh, Universal Studios. So we have to get up to Orlando. We're going to do this by driving. Not a big deal. Just rent a car and head on up. And when we went to ride uh, to, to rent the car, they said, oh, do you have a different driver? We're like, what? Or do you have a new license? I'm like, why? And he's like, happy birthday. Your license just expired a few weeks ago. And we're like, oh, no, I didn't have a license. So this has been, if you've been following the show, you know for quite some time this has been affecting us. This is when we found out. So this is going back a bit, right? All of the videos in Mazatlan, all the stuff we're doing in Mexico is all recorded after this. Florida was the beginning of our trip, and this is when we discovered that I was unable to drive. Luckily, Dominica was there, and she does have an active license, and she is able to drive a car. And luckily, she had not rented a stick shift, and so we were able to get the car. But she was very tired and really unhappy that she suddenly had to drive. Uh, it gives her a little bit of an experience of knowing what it's like for the rest of us who have to drive her around all the time, though. So it's not the end of the world, but it was awfully annoying. It did cause a lot of changes to our plans. So that got our time in Florida off to a bit of a rocky and adventurous start. But we got up to our hotel, got rid of the car, and had our time uh, in Orlando. So this is very special family time to us. And just, it was a lot of fun. We went and did a mixture of Disney and Universal Studios. We didn't put in the longest time. We don't have tons and tons of time. But honestly, we put in more time than we probably should have. Or maybe it was about perfect. We managed to do nearly everything that we set out to to do and didn't have a lot of extra time. And honestly, by the time we were done doing the two parks, everybody was tired. I'm always raring to go, but we're not filming. I'm falling behind on the show. I'm right spending a lot of money day to day. So I'm kind of like, yeah, you know, I could be, I could be done with this when the, when the time comes. I wasn't like pressured to spend more time. But of course, whenever I'm in Disney or whatever, I always feel that like, boy, I could spend more time here, right? Because I do enjoy it. But you know, the realities do set in when you're the parent and you're like, okay, yeah, this is all very expensive. This is going to be costly when we get the credit card bill. So maybe, you know, not spending as much is okay. Um, uh, I think Dominica had a really good time. The kids loved certain aspects of all the different places that we went. Um, and I really hope I can get them to all sit down at some point and do kind of a, a recap themselves of what they like and didn't like to help them remember uh, the trip. Because already by the time I'm recording this, it's I'm struggling to remember a lot of it. We had very limited time. Uh, but we did make it to basically all of the parks and, uh, of course, the Magic Kingdoms. A lot of things that the girls really liked. Uh, Epcot, um, we didn't get, I think, as much time as we would have liked. We did manage to see an awesome concert while we were there. And because we don't tend to do... Uh, like things like roller coasters and because the kids tend to get bored in a lot of the the like shows and stuff, you know, the Hall of Presidents and the American Experience, they really don't find those things interesting at all. It made it that there are a lot fewer rides that everyone really enjoyed than uh, we remember. I think the Disney of old would have been much better for our kids um, and certainly much better for us. So many of the things that we loved are gone. Over at Universal Studios, there were extremely few rides that we really enjoyed. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter was was amazing. We really did enjoy that. We did both of them. We did the trains going back and forth and got to check out the dragon with the fire and taking the Gringotts ride. And there was a lot of cool stuff. And we 
had butter beer and ate food at different places and got the wands, did a whole bunch of stuff like choosing out special wands and stuff. And I think that was really special. And there's going to be a future uh, world or whatever uh, in Islands of Adventure uh, based on uh, How to Train Your Dragon, which is Luchana's favorite media of, of any sort. As we know, we're going to be coming back at some point. That's not opening for at least two years. So sometime after that's opened and the initial crowds are gone, we plan on coming back and at least doing a little bit of time in Universal Studios so that we can go to that. And I'm sure we'll come back and do the Wizarding World of Harry Potter once again. But the kids aren't as into Harry Potter as they were many years ago. And so while it was super cool, we really enjoyed it. It didn't have the, the oomph that we were hoping for. And of course, you know, they get older and that thing is part of their childhood. And so for Dominica and I, it still seems very recent, but for them, it's like something they haven't been into for a long time. So they really did enjoy it. They really got into it. They were super excited to get to go, but it's not the same as it would have been maybe five years ago. But that doesn't mean it wasn't good. And I do think that the Wizarding World of Harry Potter is probably the highlight of the trip. For me, certainly, because I have never been there and we went to both parts of it. So that was, it was all very good. And I've never been to Universal Studios at all. I've been to Disney World so many times. That does not mean I don't want to go again. It just means I've done it a lot, but Universal, I've managed to always avoid. Anytime I was there, it was always, well, I'll do the Disney stuff and someone else can do the Universal or whatever. I just never interested until the Wizarding World was open. Then I'm like, yeah, I'd certainly like to go. So we, we put in a bit of time there, but overall, I think we exhausted Universal Studios pretty heavily. It's Honestly, pretty boring for the most part, but it wasn't bad. It's just not nearly as big and not nearly as well done as Disney World and outside of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Most of it is very action-y rides, and uh, I, we found very little of it to be very good. Um, we did do the Spider-Man ride. That one was really good, uh, but a lot of other stuff was not really very entertaining, honestly. But we didn't spend a ton of time there. It, the Wizarding World really does give you a feel a lot more like Disney World. Like you're, You feel like you're really immersed in an experience when you're there, which is fantastic. That's what it's all about. Whereas most of Universal Studios feels like just haphazard rides in a nice theme park overall, but it certainly lacked quite a bit. In Disney World, I think overall we had a better experience, but I don't think any individual thing really stood out as much as the Wizarding World. You know, we tried to go to a bit of everything. We made it to all four parks. It was a bit of a rush to get through everything for the most part, but I think we made really good use of the time. Now, the one thing that was really dramatic, and but this worked out, I think, at the end of the day really well. Both girls were very just struggling with the amount of walking and standing and being in lines, and that was really rough, and it's rough for anybody, Disney World especially, but Universal too, lots and lots of lines, and you spend so much time doing that stuff. Before I forget, I want to say the one thing that really stood out as the one ride that was like the surprise win that we really enjoyed and did multiple times was the Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor. It's one of those ones that no one ever mentions and often gets forgotten. It's not super popular, and yet when you go, it's really entertaining. It's so good. There's something about it that just makes it not super memorable, but we went twice and had a lot of fun. It's one of the ones where the girls are like, I want to go back to that. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah, let's go do that. And uh, But we um, figured out right at the beginning, because... Liesl had an infected toe. And so because of that, she was really struggling with walking. We're like, what are we going to do? This is going to completely make all of this impossible. She couldn't do anything. And so right at the beginning, we figured out that we could go. Uh, we didn't do this in Universal Studios. She walked Universal Studios. And you kind of need to because of the Wizarding World and all that. Um, so she put up with it and it made it just really bad. And it is still infected all these months later. She's still working on that. And there was a whole adventure, which we did a video on her medical care there. It's much better now, right? Now she's getting care for it, but it's improved. Um, there's actually something wrong with it and they're working on that. But I did a whole episode a while ago uh, about her toe infection and the, the adventures of trying to deal with that in Florida and just how awful the American healthcare system was. But the thing that was amazing was we went to Disney. We're like, can we like get a wheelchair? They're like, absolutely. And so it was very inexpensive. We got her a wheelchair and I pushed her around uh, for most of the days. We didn't do it for every day. And we pushed her around in that and it made such a difference. She was so happy to be able to be pushed around. It. She really enjoyed everything. If she was walking, she was so miserable and it made us all so slow and unhappy. Like everybody was really unhappy when that was going on. Um, but once we put her in the wheelchair and realized we could do that, first of all, it's a wheelchair. You can like, you know, put things in it. That made it just easier to carry stuff. 
and with her being able to ride and every so often because she was not completely unable to do things she would stand up and luciana would sometimes sit in it and and that little bit of mix helped a lot too because luciana was certainly getting exhausting and it wasn't fair that she didn't that she had to walk all of this and liesel didn't have to even though it was because of her of her toe but having access to that made such a difference and absolutely everybody and of course they're trained for this this is their job but wow did every single cast member at disney did such an amazing job um, of helping us with the wheelchair and making sure we were com accommodated and helping her because she was limping and she couldn't walk for very far and she could she was mobile she was ambulatory so there was no problems getting in and out of rides so it really worked out well but there was a ton of spots where it was like th they just managed the wheelchair and and just even though it was obviously, we paid a little bit, totally worth it. And there's this dealing with a wheelchair all day, every day. But they did such a good job of accommodating it and, and making it work well that it, it made absolutely all of the difference. And because of that, we were able to do all those days in Disney and um, everyone really enjoyed themselves. And we were tired by the end, for sure, absolutely exhausted uh, and uh, uh, glad we did it. And, you know, it's the magic age. It's the last chance that we're going to get to go at these ages where it still has that kind of magic to it a little bit. And, and you know, Chana's a good year and a half older than I was when I first went. Uh, and, and I wish we could have gone a little bit earlier, but this was good. Um, and I'm, we'll be back, but this was the last time in this really having kids mode that we'll ever get to go there, which is a super sad thing for me, right? When they were really little, we went a number of times. And as a as a parent or a future parent, you know, you kind of picture taking your kids to Disney World a lot of times and all these different memories you're gonna get to build while there. And of course we have built quite a few, like I said, we've been in the past. And, but knowing this is our last time in that way is just, it's it's sobering in, in uh, many ways that this is, the last chance that we have to do these kinds of activities together as a family. But overall, it was a good trip. And uh, sorry that today was mostly just telling you about a little bit of time in Florida, but this was our preface to a longer trip. So we're heading from here up to New York. Dominica is actually going to stay in Florida and wait for us to return. I'm heading to Rochester, New York, dropping off the kids. So as soon as we are done with Disney and, and uh, Universal, I flew up to Rochester, New York with the kids. I got them to my dad's house. Of course, I couldn't drive a car while there, so that caused a lot of disruptions. But they came and picked them up. My aunt and uncle came and helped get them. So they actually went down and stayed with my dad uh, and is gonna, are going to be there for a while. Uh, Dominic and I are heading to Mexico. We're doing uh, a whole bunch of wedding activities for a friend of ours. Uh, and while we're there, I'm going to be filming the episodes you've already seen from Mazatlan and some others in Mexico. All that's from this trip. Uh, and it's the first time we've really had to do a bunch of time in Mexico. We're doing both coasts, so it's going to be very interesting. And uh, uh, so I spent one night in Rochester. It was interesting because uh, of the hotel stuff that I had mentioned. Um, and then we are off. So at the end of this, we're heading to Mexico. So uh, the adventure from this perspective, it ends in Florida, ends in New York, and I'm going to be uh, in Mazatlan uh, literally tomorrow in the storyline of this episode. Uh, but at least three episodes from Mazatlan are already up. So that was our adventure in Florida, just so you guys know where we were in March, what was going on, and why I disappeared for a week or so. And, uh, I, well, I appreciate you guys joining me. Thanks for letting me tell you a little bit about our journey and, and what we did. And I'm excited about upcoming trips. By the time this is posting, I'm very close to uh, hopping a flight into South America for uh, another adventure down there. Believe it or not, another wedding that I'll be heading down for. And... Uh, Hope I can take you guys along. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And I'll see all of you tomorrow.